Polychoria is an eye disease that affects the pupils, causing two or more pupils to appear in your eyes rather than the usual one. And as with most medical conditions or terms, the naming mainly comes from stealing Latin or Greek words. In this case, Greek was stolen, with poly meaning many and choria being taken from core, which means pupil or something along those lines, together forming polychoria, or many pupils. Creative naming, right? Anyways, polychoria is typically split into two categories, true polychoria and false polychoria. The main difference between the two is that true polychoria has pupils with their own functioning sphincter muscles that constrict or dilate based on exposure to light. You know, the scenes normal pupils do. False polychoria, on the other hand, is rather boring in comparison to true polychoria, so I'll get most of the info for false polychoria out of the way. Anyways, let's begin. False polychoria is sometimes also referred to as pseudo polychoria. To put it simply, false polychoria just looks like true polychoria. It's nothing more than a cheap knockoff that's the equivalent to just having another hole in your eye. The hole is there, but you're not going to see out of it. The excess pupils don't have their own sphincter muscles, nor are they responsive to light, meaning that the pupils are just there and don't serve any purpose other than being a decorative future. And they aren't technically actual pupils. They're more so just holes in your eye that look like pupils. Mere imitations of a pupil with none of the actual functions. Meaning that you can't see out of those extra holes. Which also means it doesn't affect your eyesight at all. Pseudopolychoria is more often than not a result of imperfections of the eyes caused by some other eye condition that got mistaken for polychoria. So we can just completely disregard false polychoria since it's boring and not interesting at all. It's nothing more than a cheap knockoff. You can easily achieve false polychoria by just taking a needle and stabbing yourself in the eye. Disclaimer, this channel does not promote self-harm. Regardless of how humorous I might find the mental imagery of someone stabbing themselves in the eye with a needle in Looney Tune style. Don't. For obvious reasons, stabbing yourself in the eye is a horrible idea. Then again, that would just be natural selection at work. Anyways, that basically concludes everything there is to know about false polychoria. Starting from this point onwards, as to avoid the hassle of having to say true every time, I'll be referring to true polychoria as just polychoria. I still bring up pseudo polychoria here and there, so pay attention. Anyways, polychoria is a congenital disease, which means you're born with it. Although, despite it being a condition you're born with, People usually don't get diagnosed with it until adulthood, mostly due to how many other eye conditions resemble polychoria and the uncertainty of what exactly it is you have. Moving on, polychoria usually affects only one eye, but it's possible for it to occur in both eyes. The easiest way to differentiate between the cheap knockoffs and the genuine article is to look at the iris. If there's more than one iris or overlapping irises, then it's most likely polychoria, or some new undiscovered eye disease. Now let's take a breather, and think about just how many people you've seen with any form of polychoria. Probably zero, right? Which just tells you that the condition itself is extremely rare. I couldn't even find any values for how many people have polychoria. I mean, I did find one value which said it was 1 in 10,000 people, but that was from Bean, and we all know how reliable Bean is. China didn't even bother restricting access to Bean. And it's China we're talking about. Anyways, since there's a complete lack of information, I'll just make my own speculations on how rare it is. While I did find something on Wikipedia. Wikipedia is somewhat of a dicey option, so believe it at your own risk. Regardless, according to Wikipedia, there have only been two documented cases of true polychoria since 1966. So if we were to use Wikipedia's data, We'd have to first find out what the population was in 1966, which was around 3.4 billion. And now in 2024, it's roughly 8.1 billion. So the population has increased by 4.7 billion in 58 years. If we factor in the dead people too, then I'd say that between 1966 and 2024, there have been anywhere between 10 to 20 billion people that existed. I'm too lazy to do any actual math on population trends in calculating the exact number of people that may or may not have existed. But if you're really that curious, you can go figure it out yourself. 
Anyways, assuming that 20 billion different people did exist in the span of 58 years, then the chances of polychoria occurring would be about 1 in 10 billion. But if you paid attention, you would have seen the keyword, documented. Which means it doesn't account for undocumented cases. So I'll just multiply the 2 by 10. Which, yes, it's a number I just pulled out of my ass. Making it so that polychoria affects 1 in a billion people. Again. All this is just a blind guess based on haphazardly made estimations. I've done next to zero math so far. Now, if I were to infer what the actual ratio of people with polychoria is based on my own personal speculations, I'd say it's probably 1 in 100 million. And no, I won't explain my reasoning. As for false polychoria, considering how a surprising number of people are actually aware of this condition, and if I also consider how long I've lived, no matter how much of an introverted shut-in I may be, I've definitely seen more than 100,000 different people by now. And considering how none of them even had false polychoria, I'd guess that false polychoria is somewhere along the lines of 1 in a million or 1 in 10 million. Again, I don't have any actual sourcing or math to back these numbers. All of these values are just numbers I'm haphazardly throwing around. So trust them at your own risk. Then again, I suppose the values don't really matter since it really doesn't make a difference. It's really more of a fun fact if I'm being honest. Anywho, because of how absurdly rare polychoria is, finding someone with polychoria that is willing to become a research subject might as well be impossible. So the exact cause for polychoria is still a mystery. There's basically no information or any studies done on it. And as a result, I also don't have many references to work with. Most of the images on Google are just edited, which is a bit odd in the first place. Why would people feel the need to fake images about such a rare eye disease? And why are there so many of these images? Is there something that I'm missing? But anyways, my interpretation of what polychoria looks like is that the irises will usually be overlapping. I doubt that having two completely separate irises will work that well. I mean, just take a look at my crappy drawing and you tell me why two separate irises can pose a problem. I'm sure it's possible for the irises to be completely disconnected from each other. But if such a case were to happen, it's bound to mess with that person's eyesight. But considering the congenial nature of polychoria, it's probably caused by some mutation in the developmental stage of a fetus, which is purely my own speculation due to the complete and utter lack of information. If you want more concrete theories, well, I can't give you any. The best I can do is give you possible causes for pseudopolychoria, which are axenfeld weiger syndrome, erito corneo endocilio syndrome, and etc. There's way more, but false polychoria is just boring, so I'd rather not make a list of scientific names I can't pronounce. But the general gist of scenes is that most eye conditions related to the pupil are somehow connected to pseudopolychoria. In any case, as I mentioned earlier, polychoria has multiple pupils with sphincters, meaning that those pupils are fully functional, with the pupil shrinking a bit compared to normal pupils thanks to having to share space with the secondary pupil. You've heard of the saying that two heads are better than one. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't apply here. You would think that having twice the number of pupils would improve your visual acuity, but nah. Having two pupils in one eye reduces the functionality of your iris and pupils, causing blurring, double vision, excessive glaring, or excessive stimulation in response to bright lights. It just ends up confusing your brain, causing distortion in what you see. Although the concept of polychoria is fairly similar to that of a fly's eye, none of the benefits carry over. In the end, polychoria is still an eye disease, a defect. It's cool and interesting to look at, but really, it just causes a whole lot of minor inconveniences. But moving on to treatments for polychoria. There's only one treatment, and that's a surgery called pupilloplasty, which usually involves cutting the bridge connecting the pupils, meaning that it's a situational surgery that only applies if the pupils are connected to each other. If they aren't, well, good luck with that. Besides that, it's recommended you only get the surgery if the polychoria is affecting your vision. And once again, due to how elusive polychoria is, there basically exists no data to confirm the effectiveness or safety of undergoing pupilloplasty. 
Surgery is simply just the most straightforward answer. Okay, cool, so you have two pupils in one eye, that's causing you to see double. And you want to fix that, am I correct in my deduction? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think we should just cut out one of them. That should do the trick. Won't that damage my eye? Maybe. But don't worry, this surgery is perfectly safe. It has a 0% mortality rate. Oh, I guess that's fine then. Say, Doc, just out of curiosity, how many people have done this surgery before me? Why, of course. You're the first one. How else would we have a 0% mortality rate? Wait, what? <laughs> so yeah, it might just be better to bear with the side effects of polychoria. Doing the surgery is basically going in blind. And you might come out blind too. Anyway, specially made glasses should be able to take care of any problems with your eyesight. And tinted sunglasses should help with the glare at least. Overall, polychoria is a fairly harmless condition. But still a pretty cool one. It's just bad eyesight for the most part. And with that, you've made it to the end of this video. Where you probably have realized that all of this information is completely useless. But it's still fun to know more. Right? In conclusion. No matter how much Polychoria may resemble a Sharingan, it provides you with no special abilities of any sort. That means no copying jutsus for you.